from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to catalog some lulls. Like the sweet sounds of the sh- shuffling card catalog, which is pretty quiet because you know, can't really shuffle a card catalog. You need gigantic hands and but nimble fingers. Is there any fictional creatures that have gigantic hands with nimble fingers? Because that's what you'd need to, to... I don't think... Maybe you just need a lot. I don't know. Because card catalogs are an old thing old libraries used to have. But just picture like a, a drawer that is the size of playing cards, you know, that you play games with, like that fit a thousand cards per drawer. And if you're confused now, just wait till later because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Hey, Brody, this is Scoots here. And I, like usually this, this would be part of the whole, but this is like something I support and I'm coming in here. Because I really want to encourage you to support the Asian members of our community. And one thing I support and you could support is to go to napawf.org right now. And that's the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum. It's the only organization uh, focused on building power with AAPI women and girls to influence critical decisions that affect our lives, our families, and our communities. As a father uh, of an AAPI woman, uh, this is really important to me. Uh, but as a member of the, this community and my broader community and my local community, it's important to me too. So if you go to napawf.org, you can take action right now in a few different ways. You can donate, you can sign their petition, and you can learn more. Uh, so I want to empower you right now to take action to support the AAPI uh, members of our community. Uh, thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. I don't know if you've been to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash P-A-T-R-O-N-F-E-E-D. If you're a patron and you don't have your uh, patron bonus content, it's not really even bonus content. It's your membership. It has so many episodes, so many different styles. You can create playlists from that work for you. So if you haven't set it up in your patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed, or if you want to become a patron, you say, Scoots, I'm looking for episodes without the jingles, or I, I'm looking for all-night episodes. I like intro episodes. I like the story-only episodes. I don't like, you know, I, I want episodes without the thank yous. I want more Ray. It's all there. Between 5 and $20 a month, you could be an annual patron. You'll get a month free. You get the pride in knowing, wow, I'm a part of an amazing community of a podcast that not just helps me, but helps hundreds of thousands of other people every single night fall asleep. You could sign up, or if you're already a patron, Please get it set up. Sleep with me podcast.com slash patron feed. You could sign up to be a patron, or if you do it from your phone and you're already a patron, you just log in, click allow. You can pick from a list of podcast apps and you could subscribe. Uh, that's sleep with me podcast.com slash patron feed. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, if you're having trouble meeting your goals right now, difficulty relationships, trouble sleeping, or if you're feeling stressed or depressed, BetterHelp is available. BetterHelp offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. And I've talked about this a lot on the podcast, is that I've had a a lot of struggles throughout my lifetime with mental health and with uh, self-medication and stuff. And working with professional licensed therapists has given me the tools to function and flourish in my life. And that's one of the things I'm so grateful for is the relationship I have with my therapist, someone I can talk to who can listen and help me. And with BetterHelp, you simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs and BetterHelp will match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And this isn't self-help or a 
crisis line. This is secure online professional counseling. BetterHelp counselors have a broad range of expertise, which may not be available in your area. There are services available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send unlimited messages to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions and everything you share is confidential. You don't have to worry about going to the office or sitting in a waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so it's easy and free to change counselors if needed. So you can find someone you're comfortable talking to and working with. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Sleep With Me listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. So visit betterhelp, B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash sleep with me. And you can join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp professional. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about what, partially to talk about my new sofa, but to start talking about your new sofa because you deserve one. And what if you had a sofa that came from the same company that makes the amazing Helix mattress that I sleep on every Every single night because you've heard me talking about that thing it's like a sleeping on a dream well helix has left the bedroom and they started making sofas and they launched this new company called all form and the sofas are absolutely amazing they're customizable they're modular i just bought some new pillows and an extra seat for my sofa to just expand it by a little bit all form is the easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials and at the fraction of a cost of traditional stores you pick your fabric and great news for me, Scoots, it's a spill, stain, and scratch resistant. But I got to pick the color of my sofa. I got a nice gray. I got some espresso colored legs. And I got to pick a shape that fits my needs now. And like I said, later on, you can add on. So as you move or you move things around, you say, well, I'd like to rearrange my sofa. I'd like to add a chair or an ottoman or a chase lounge. I mean, they have armchairs and love seats if you're just getting started all the way up to an eight seat sectional. So there's something for everyone. You know what? They make it easy for you. All form sofas are delivered directly to your home with fast, free shipping. You know, in the past, it was big rigmarole. You had to find a delivery company. You had to go to a bunch of stores, pick something out, deal with a salesperson. You had to have somebody come and assemble it. Uh, All form takes uh, three to seven days to arrive in the mail. And it is so easy to put together. If you go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors, you could see me assembling my all form sofa and then getting comfortable on it. It is such a positive experience. And now it's become a family hub. You know, Sophia and I are watching YouTube or we're watching movies together, having some popcorn, snuggling up, playing board games on the ottoman, and even taking a snooze on the weekends. And I know you're saying to yourself, well, I'm not so sure about uh, getting a sofa without trying it in a store. No worries with that either. You get a hundred days to decide if you want to keep it. So that's more than three months. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for you, give you a full refund and they even offer a forever warranty literally forever this thing is so well made so it's time it's you've heard enough about my sofa it's time to start thinking about what color would you make your sofa would you would you put a chase lounge on there are you going to have it be an l shape or just a sofa or maybe just start with the love seat to find your perfect sofa check out allform.com slash sleep that's a-l-l-f-o-r-m dot com slash sleep and all form is offering 20 percent off off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash sleep. That's 20% off all orders at allform.com slash sleep. And then share with me in your Instagram story. I want to see what you're getting. I want to see you putting it together. I want to see some of those popping colors in your home. Uh, thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. Let the sponsors know about it. All our sponsors are direct response, meaning their budget around the show and their support of the podcast is based on, you know, the listeners that support them. So it's the listeners that go the extra mile. We're able to be here free twice a week. 
because of them. I want to thank Marlena, who's got a Daily Ho Harvest order in, supported Daily Harvest, telling me how much Marlena is looking forward to those easy lunchtime and dinner meals, breakfast smoothies, bowls at lunchtime, flatbreads at dinner that are tasty, easy to make, and, and oh, so good for you. And then I want to thank Mike, who reached out to BetterHelp and then let me know about it. And congratulations, Mike, on taking that step. Uh, so thank you, Marlena. Thank you, Mike. If you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it. You could use our page over at sleepingpodcast.com slash sponsors. And uh, that's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. There's links to organizations you could connect with right in the show notes. And it's about the support. It's about supporting the members of our community. I'm trying to support positive change, looking inward and acting outward. You can take steps to support the members of our community, to support the members of your local community, to say Black Lives Matter with your actions. And there's going to be links to organizations you can connect with and you can support right in the show notes. So please do so. And that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Zone. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Run, 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 run. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathan Man. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed. Turn out the lights and press play. And I'm going to do the rest. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, so things on your mind that are going through your head, uh, physical, like physical sensations or feelings, anything emotionally you're experiencing. Whatever is keeping you awake, it could be some of those things. It could be changes in time or temperature or routine or something situational, anticipation or decompress, you know, decompression. Whatever it is, I'd like to take your mind off of that. What I propose to do, and let me know what you think about this uh, or see if you could say, well, I don't know. Let me see how it goes. I'm going to, I got a safe place here. I've smoothed it. I've padded it. I've rubbed it down. Uh, then I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Oh, so creaky are my tones. So creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders. So those are like where I go off topic, as you've already seen a few times. Uh, superfluous tangents. So uh, I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to go off topic. All to keep you company while you fall asleep. Now, if you're new, a couple of things I want you to know. This podcast is very different. So let me give you a couple of pieces of, uh, I don't know, a helpful experience from long-term listeners. This is the wisdom of long-term listeners they've passed on to me to pass on to you. And that sounds like a joke, but it's not. The one is that this is a podcast you just barely listen to. Uh, you almost listen to it passively or not at all, but, or, but you can, it's weird. You can kind of actively listen or you can, you can shift your listening modes depending on what your needs are. 
but you kind of find that out as you become a regular listener. So when you first start out, it's kind of the idea that you're just kind of barely listening. If you're listening closely in anticipating the show getting started or going somewhere or making sense, that could be a little bit, you, you say, okay, it's uh like, here's the thing, like, some people sit in rack, rocking chairs have kind of, have they fallen out of favor or are they just not as popular anymore? I don't know. I mean, I don't have a rocking chair in my home. There was a glider rocker when my daughter was born, but it ended up that actually the uh, yoga ball worked better or the couch. Not, that's not a knock on glider rockers, but like a rocking chair is is something, I guess, uh, steeped in nostalgia. But if you were sitting in it, you'd be rocking back and forth, right? Or you'd be, you could be sitting there. I think that's the problem with rocking chairs is they don't have a lot of, they're not good for just sitting around. Uh, and I, I don't know if I've ever seen, and when people try to make plush rocking chairs and they say, well, this is a recliner with some rocking action, well, we've gone far afield already because I could talk about this for hours. But I was just thinking, like, if you sit in a rocking chair, you kind of know what you're in for. You're like, this chair ain't going anywhere except back and forth. That's kind of like this podcast. Uh, it goes a little bit more than back and forth. But as you become a regular listener, your expectations of a rocking chair are limited. No offense, rocking chairs. I mean, I'm no D.H. Lawrence, so I'm not going to start, uh, but, you know, I don't need to go down, like, uh, that's a whole different situation, and that's not even a chair. But, uh, so now my mind's even more confused. My mind's like, what, why'd you bring up, and I said, well, just because of, rock, the, you see, what is D.H. Lawrence responsible for all rocking-based fiction? And I'd say, no, I mean, I'm sure there's rock and roll or rock-based fiction, but when you have a rocking object, uh, and then I'm thinking about sitting in it. So, I don't know. That's one thing. It's just to passively listen. Or <laughs> I tried to create an analogy, and it went exactly the way it was supposed to, just like that was a sleep-with-me analogy. I tried to make a non-sleep-with-me analogy, and it became a sleep-with-me analogy. So that's perfect. So just barely listen. The other thing is this podcast really doesn't put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep, which is different in the sense that I'm only here to keep your mind up stuff. The reason the episodes are about an hour is so you have plenty of time to fall asleep. I'm here to be your companion in the deep, dark night, your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie, your boar bruh. Uh, I'm here to be your boar bud. And... Take your mind off stuff. That's why. So the episodes are not over an hour, so you have plenty of time to fall asleep. So those are two things that throw new people off. It takes two or three tries to get used to. That's what repetitive people say over and over again. I literally just read a review where someone heard about the podcast a year ago, listened once, said, oh boy, not for me. Then came back, listened again, and said, hmm, still not for me, but I'll listen to it. Pleasant enough. Then the next night said, hmm, it's pleasant enough. Might as well listen again. Then the third night, they became a regular listener. And that's a pretty circuitous path to, to get get to it. But uh, I don't know. Is that what it's like being a rocking chair? It, I mean, I, I think it is because here's the thing. Not everybody, I mean— there are rocking chair stereotypes, right? You got the Hitchcockian use of rocking chairs, which we won't get into. And then you have older adults, and then that's it. Uh, and you say, okay, well, if we, if we broaden our view of who could sit in a rocking chair, anybody who's into sitting, you would still say, so if we said the whole planet this would be like a logic question on a standardized test. You say, if the whole planet could sit in a rocking chair, I get, w the, then I guess the next question would be, would the whole planet sit in a rocking chair? No. But they, if they could, then we would know who would, right? <laughs> right? And you say, okay, wow, I'm impressed by this data of the people that like sitting in rocking chairs. There is a... a, 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 a percentage of the planet that does like it. 
I guess it was, I don't even know where, where what point I, I thought I thought it was almost to a point, and then I said, "But it, give it a few tries." Is that what I was saying? And then it'll grow on you. But just see how it goes. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing that could throw new people off, understandably, is the structure of the show. Even throws regular listeners off. So the show, show starts off with business or greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So you feel seen and welcome. Then we have business and listener support, resources for you, resources so the show can stay free and sponsors. Then there's the intro. The intro goes from like minute six or minute eight to around minute 20. And the intro introduces the podcast. Obviously, that's why I call it's called an intro. It could be called a show within a show. Like it could be the I don't know what we'd call it though, other than the intro, the ramble, the extra rambles. Uh, but it serves a secondary purpose for regular listeners or even new listeners is that it slowly gives you some distance from the day. It slowly helps you wind down. And a lot of regular listeners use it as part of their wind-down routine, whether they're getting ready for bed or they're in bed getting cozy or they're doing some sort of other relaxing activity. So the the, the idea of the intro is that for us uh, that can't sleep or have issues falling asleep or waking up or stuff, it's uh, it's not some quick fix. It's not a, a switch that gets – it's like a dimmer. Yeah, I'm like – I'm a slow dimmer. And yes, I'm dim. That my brain just said that. Oh boy. So that's why the intro goes on and on and on uh, is to help you ease into bedtime. And there is three percent of regular listeners that skip ahead to twenty minutes and start the show there and kind of just see where it starts. There's people that listen all night. There's people that uh, start the show in the middle of the night. There's people that listen during the day while they work or they need a break. So you could kind of see what works for you. And go from there. Um, so that's the intro. Then after the intro is our sponsors. And that's just kind of the, uh, the structure of podcasts is that's called the middle of the, it's the mid roll, even though it's not the middle of the show. And so those are two more of the sponsors that help keep the show free. Then there'll be our story tonight. It'll be a new thing. We've only done in one other style before. And I haven't recorded it, but I'm thinking I'm going to look through some old catalogs and I'll have to explain what a catalog is. That's going to be exciting, sleepy stuff. And I'm sure there's people that are like, what do you mean people don't know what catalogs are? And I say, well, I mean, it's not a catalogs. And soon, I mean, in two generations, it'll just, it will be history. I'm not trying to say that in a good or bad way, but I say there's still some catalogs that are around but for the most part, that's just not a thing anymore. But I said, well, let's look back at some and just see where it goes. Because we went one time we looked through old HBO guides, and that, was, that turned out pretty well. That was a popular episode. So we'll see how that goes. So, so that'll be the story. So that's the structure show. Then there's some thank yous at the end, thanking listeners who do stuff to help the show out. And I think that's it. I mean, the only other things to know is I make this show because I've been there and because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place you can rest and and get some sleep. And and that's important to me because it means our world will be a better place if your world's a better place, if you're able to inhabit your world a little bit more. And it gives me purpose. Uh, So I'm glad you're here. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive and I really want to help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring the show free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, one of the country's leading providers of auto insurance. With Progressive's Name Your Price tool, you could say what kind of coverage you're looking for and how much you want to pay, and Progressive will help you find options that fit within your budget. Use the Name Your Price tool and start an online quote today at Progressive.com. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody, this is Scoots here, and I I think I probably talked about it in the intro. This is an experimental episode in some sense, and I don't even know if the technology is going to work, so I may may have to, who knows, this is interesting stuff. Uh, So this is an episode I thought of not, not that long ago. It may have popped into my head in the past, and this could be something that is like a two or three time a year style episode, because I know we did it in another sense, um, and it worked, and 
So basically, let's see, how do I explain all this? So I think it was like, so this is what January, oh, February 3rd, I'm recording this. And you're hearing it far in the future. But at some point in the last three or four days, I was walking around and I was having different discussions with people. And actually, oh, no, and I was reading this newsletter. It's funny because I was just talking about the Patreon newsletter and something I recorded before this. But uh, and the person mentioned the Radio Shack electronics kit or just an electronics kit uh, and it was probably somebody like my generation, maybe on the cusp of the generation before me, but they were talking about that. And it reminded me of uh, Radio Shack catalogs. And that reminded me of like uh, other catalogs. And I think actually it wasn't a Radio Shack catalog. It was just a Radio Shack sales flyer for the holidays. And it, this is a little bit consumerist, or, but it's interesting in dissecting it in a way. Like, because they used to, when people say thirst nowadays, or they used to say that like the four years ago, like I would look through this thing and I would be like, I got to get a chemistry set, or I got to get an electronics kit, or I got to get this thing. Oh boy, it's going to change everything. And then there was, a, and I'll explain a little bit more about catalogs to those of you that uh, aren't of my generation, because I want to keep you included, of course. Uh, but also, like, and maybe to people that are my parents' generation, to kind of p- put some things in perspective, too. Uh, so, and then we can kind of, uh, we're all here in the big, big dark night. What is it? What do I call it? The deep dark night together. But so there were other catalogs um, that I would look through. So let me define a catalog because there still are some catalogs th- that I come in contact with. I don't get any more of them. Um, well, maybe I get one and, and so I, you know, and, uh, so the two I'm thinking of that you may be familiar with are the Ikea catalog, which is still pretty popular. And, uh, I don't know, like you can pick it up at the store. I think they mail it to some people, or if you live in a big apartment building, sometimes there's a stack of them there. And then in podcasting, which I don't think I get one of these catalogs, but I live in an apartment building that, or apartment that, that's had some turnover. And so I still get a lot of mail from previous residents uh, to my apartment. And one of those people gets a a catalog from an electronics company or an audiovisual company. They get the Sweetwater catalog. So that's a popular one. Or B&H, B&H Photo in New York is another big catalog. Uh, I'm surprised I don't get one of those because I, I, I don't like I bought stuff from Sweetwater and B and B and H before, even in, from B and H in the last few months. So like when it had they had it in stock or a little bit better deal of something I needed, and those are companies that sell, you know, pod, like equipment for uh, for bands, a guitar similar to what you'd buy at Guitar Center. And a video store. So they're like a combination of a guitar center. And then if you were in video production, a lot of this, what they sell is prosumer, but they do sell pro level stuff too. Um, and with a podcaster, I mean, a lot of stuff you can buy from the, the big consumer company, but sometimes those companies have a better price or better. Sometimes they have a better selection of better stock. So if you're like looking for a camera or a microphone, or um, uh, what else have I bought? I think I bought it, my compu- both my computers. I'm not sure now, but Apple Outlet is where I bought my. Uh, but so those are catalogs. They're, and when I say catalog, I mean something that's like in color. We're talking hundreds of pages. I can't think of any other ones that I get or that I've even come across in my own life in, in the last uh, long time. But those are two, if you say, Scooch, what's the catalog? But before the computer, before the internet, uh, and the internet's kind of, you know, I'm sure, I mean, I think it's a good thing. You say, okay, that's a lot of paper. Even if it's recycled paper, then you got the ink or whatever. And it it's not, I mean, so that's one side of it. We see it's not very efficient either. Even the B&H or Sweetwater catalogs, it's cool to look through them occasionally um, but it's not super efficient. I would say with the IKEA catalog, it may have some efficiency 
just because you're you're trying to design a room and sometimes having it um like a hard copy and you can look through it in the room you're in it does it does have some utility but when i was a child uh, i guess was like a, like when cattle like that was before we had the internet so you couldn't go searching for stuff or then you had basic online stuff uh as I got a little older into high school or may, whenever I got into getting online, but whatever. Uh, so you used to get, ca- there was catalogs and sales flyers. Now sales flyers are still a thing. Costco sends me one like uh, at least every other week. And then we get the ones for the grocery store and the fast food places in our mailbox. Uh, but so, but catalogs and sales flyers were like the main way, other than going to the store, you could see products. And I think people used to buy them. And I know when I lived in L.A., I think it was J.C. Penney. Like, so I lived in East L.A., and my landlord, she was a longtime employee. I think of maybe it was J.C. Penney or Sears, and they had a big catalog distribution. And I think they had just closed it down, or she had just retired. Uh, probably they just closed it down because that would have been on the, the waning of the, the catalog business. But so they would send these to your house. Sometimes you would sign up and then sometimes they would just send them out prospectively. And I'm sure they could have used algorithms back then because they probably would have benefited by saying, now, like, these are the people that are most likely to, you know, these are the people whose buying habits. You say, okay, focus catalogs on them. They like buying through catalogs. And then they said, these people, if you send them a catalog, they're less likely to buy for, for, through a catalog. But in, actually, it's still worth it because it actually drives business to the stores. And then they say, okay, and then this, the, like, the, whatever they said, the, then there's a, the, another, like, uh, style of consumer that says, no, they just want to buy in person. They don't need a catalog. But catalogs were a thing well before my time, and, and I mean, they were a business, in mail, like a mail-order business, I think. I don't know. I'm not going to get into the history of catalogs just because um, that's a whole other thing. But so I said to myself, because we did this HBO episode a long time ago now, where I looked through, I collected a bunch of... Uh, like so, HBO they didn't send a catalog, but they sent like a monthly mini magazine with like what was on HBO, similar to TV Guide, but just HBO specific. And you could look through there, and they had hey, what's coming up, but also like a guide of what was going to be on. So it was like part marketing, part utility. And I looked through a bunch of those, trying to figure out when I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. And just so I said, well, that'd be interesting if we could look through some catalogs. So what I'm going to do is you won't hear me pause the thing. Hopefully it'll be a split second, but I'm going to pause it. I, I tried to get some archives of some catalogs, and I don't know how well this is going to work, if the technology is going to work, because also this is like um, when I'm recording this in 2021, flat, like uh, Flash and, and those kind of things, different ways of... Uh, relaying information through browsers has changed and a lot of these sites were uh, older um so i don't know if i'll be able to do it or pull it off i mean i'll pull it off uh, if it's not today i'll pull I'll, you know do some work and you know create a gallery or some photo gallery and do it myself but so i'll be right back with the catalog and we'll go through it and just see how it goes what do you say Okay, cool. So this one worked, I think. Uh, we'll see. But uh, this is from 1983. So I was just a wee lad back then. But I saw this one, and my eyes lit up. I said, holy cow, there's a lot to go through here. And I think this will be interesting with pricing and uh, thirsting and my daydreaming. You'll be able to see when my daydreaming. But it would be cool to have a time machine because there'd probably be good stuff for recording a pod. You could have had a pod. If you were a podcaster, you could go back in time. You could really make something. So this one is the Radio Shack Christmas Sale and Gift Catalog. Looks like it's 48 pages. It's from 1983. I'm getting this from RadioShackCatalogs.com. That's how I'm viewing this. And Radio Shack, I think they would. These would come in the Sunday paper. This was before I was a paper boy, but uh, 
It, it what it has is like a green Christmas tree with different levels of uh, gifts uh, against a red background. The tree is green. In the top is a TV. It looks like it also has a VHS tape. And if you're if you're you know under under forty, not a TV like you can imagine. The second tier is an electronics kit, which we'll talk about. The third tier is a, some toys on the left and then some calculators and clocks on the right. So then the fourth tier on the left is, this was the era of clock radios and then something like a radio with a big speaker, but not what I would call boombox, but there is a boombox coming. Then on the other side is a microphone and headphones like you would use for a singing or in all honesty, podcasting. I'm not sure. It looks like it might be uh, the mic. Mic and might not be good for podcasting, just because uh, just because of uh, where you record podcasts is it normally a house or an apartment. But we'll talk about that. Then on the next level is a CB and some scanners, maybe or walkie-talkies. Then in the center is like a two two channel. Actually, it's always two channel, like a stereo cabinet. Then at, next to that is like a electronics tester and I think rechargeable batteries. Uh, then below that is a little bit nicer stereo system with a record player. In the middle is uh, some cassette tapes and eight track tape, maybe. And then next to that is what you would call a boombox. No, not the biggest boombox with a cassette player, radio, and two decent-sized speakers. Uh, then below that is an 8-track player. And next to that is one that we'll talk about a lot because it was in my house. Uh, what is? I don't know what it's called, though. I, no, huh, I don't know what it's called, though. It's the thing you would talk into and it would amplify your voice. It's typically used as a device in movies for gym teachers or principals. Uh, bullhorn, that's what it's called. It might have a different thing. Then next to that is a telephone, and a touchtone telephone, and then a, a answering machine. Then below that are computers, but not any computers like you've seen. Yeah, and a laptop or laptop word processor, a couple of them and then a desktop, and then something like a, some sort of uh, printing, printing, like accounting calculator. So, yeah, let's go to page, let's go to the next page, hopefully. Page two, hopefully I can zoom. Okay, so this one, I remember seeing this thing, and I don't know how many years Radio Shack had it, but this was a computer, and it was called the Model 100. America's gift sensation, the micro executive workstation. And it's the first portable computer with uh, built in programs, self contained direct connect telephone modem with auto dialer, easy to read, uh, eight line by 40 characters LCD display. And the memory can be expanded up to 32K. And the the 8K RAM model, so just to, just to kind of 8K, I have no idea how small that is, but um, like uh, the RAM on, uh, I think most phones have at least a, between 1 and 8 gigs of RAM, uh, and 8K is 1,000. So that one's 799, and then the 24K model is 999. And I used to look at this thing, and it's actually not as ridiculous as it sounds. So I don't know how well it works, because it is about a little bit bigger than um, a keyboard with a small screen built right into it. It seems sensible. There's also um, the TRS-80 Model 100. It's one of the most talked about, most wanted computers ever. True portable, works on batteries or AC adapter, optional. Small enough to fit in a briefcase, yet powerful enough to be a desktop microcomputer. And it has five built-in management programs. Uh, personal word process, plus personal, uh, with word, person, word processing, full-size typewriter keyboard, 
appointment calendar, address book, phone directory, and telephone auto dialer. And you can write your own basic programs. And you could access national information services with the built in thing. Uh, and oh, the 8K uh, memory expansion. So you're better off just buying the 24K. Oh, no, that's memory versus RAM. Maybe it only has RAM, though. But the memory expansion installation is in required, and it was $119. So I remember looking at this thing. So I don't know how many, like I said, but I just remember saying, man, this thing, like that would change my life. I don't think it would have. I know there's people that learned basic and, and have, you know, had a lifetime of success after it. But I don't think I was willing to learn basic. Uh, so I did take basic. You, you probably heard about the time I embarrassed my mom when I went to computer camp. Uh, and so maybe we'll talk about that again. But uh, then they have another, blo- our most powerful pocket computer. That one's a Super Saver 149. That's a TRS-80 model pocket computer PC2. Small computer with big computing features, ready to run software. Requires interface and recorder or program it yourself. Extended basic language. Um, can't really read it much else on it, but uh, that one's 150 And then there's stocking stuffers. There was the model PC-4 with basic language, expandable, 400, 544 character memory. So the memory on the computer could only hold 544 characters. But again, there's people like Stephen King. Wrote, I think wrote a lot of books in in, in a like a like a word like a word processor like this. Uh, I mean, like the first one I mentioned. There's the PC4 cassette interface that needs two AA batteries. There's a PC4 printer that's seventy nine bucks. Uh, pocket computer model PC dash three that has a twenty four character LCD. That's 99 bucks, and that has a printer interface, uh, cassette interface. Um, that's 119 And these were a lot of things on the cover. Then this one, save $20 on the PC2 printer plotter dual cassette interface. I don't think, I don't know what cassettes they're talking about, though, but uh, it's a four-color graphics uh, plot Four color graphics and print upper and lowercase characters in nine sizes. Use one or two recorders for increased input and versatility. So that's cool. Then the, over here, they have uh, their first, one of their free computers. I don't know if it's their first computer. This is pretty cheap. It, it plugs it, you need to plug it into a TV. And it had eight colors attached to any TV, 4,000 characters of internal memory. That's a TRS-80 microcolor computer. That's seven, only $79. I mean, seriously, when you think about the pricing on other stuff, uh, uh, give you someone you know a head start in computing, a typewriter-style keyboard, real keys, not a plastic overlay. Learn to program with built-in basic. It comes with a tutorial could get a dot matrix printer with the graphics for $99, uh, TP thermal. And you could get the whole system for 184. So that's, uh, you're saving one, wait, 99 plus 79. Oh, cause it comes with the cables too. It used to be once upon a time you couldn't get printer cables were like another way they made money. Because I was like, 99 plus one set plus 79 is like 180. So, yeah, they're giving you the cable for four bucks. That's not a bad deal. There's also um, TRS-80 accessories. Uh, what do they got? Uh, five and a quarter inch unformatted discs uh, were about five bucks. So you could get a 10-pack for 40 bucks. Uh, disk drive head cleaning kit, 30 bucks. Uh, computer cassette tapes, that was a thing. Um, those were, uh, depending on the quantity, three to three to two to three bucks. Okay, and then we get into um, the programs. And I don't know if this was probably after, this was before the computer we had, TI 994A. 
But let's see. So they had educational computer programs, taxi, cooperative strategy game. That's 1995. So computer games have always kind of been the same. Star Trap, uh, Peanut Butter Panic, cooperative strategy pays off. Uh, Grover's Number Rover, basic skills games for ages three to six. These are all 20 bucks. Uh, they're from CCW, Com- Children's Computer Workshop, from the Creators of Sesame Street, Ernie's Magic Shapes, Big Bird Special Delivery, and Cookie Monster's Letter Crunch. Then they had ones from Disney, too. $34.95, though. <laughs> so you talk about the stuff that has not... I mean, I don't know anything about inflation, so I don't even talk about it. But they had Math Adventures with Mickey. Mickey Mouse teaches methods of problem-solving, ages 9 to 13. And Space Probe Math uh, for ages 7 to 14. Then they had big holiday savings on these action-packed TRS-80 color computer games, up to 50% off. Reactoids, uh, Gomoku and Renju, Canyon Climber, Chess, Dino Wars, put your dinosaur against another in a duel. These games are all under $20. Uh, Space, uh, Defend the Earth, uh, so some of these are like imitations of other games. Art Gallery, Draw Color Pictures, 2988, Polaris, uh, Wildcatting. That's one word, Wildcatting. Bring in a gusher. I think it's an oil drilling game. Carnival game, Popcorn. Catch the popcorn with five frying pans before it hits the conveyor belt. I think that's probably like that root beer game. Audio Spectrum Anal- Analyzer, Test Stereo Equipment for Performance, Super Burst Out, Microbes, uh, Project Nebula, and Color Cubes. And then they also have add-ons, a multi-pack interface, connect up to four program packs at once. That's $179. I guess these are all in, or, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, Cartridge forms and then joysticks, they were $24. Oh, yeah, here's their color computer, too. So, I don't know if this is this must have been before. I don't know what, but the color computer, too, is a great gift idea. Super saver. The 16K one is $159, and the 16K extended basic one is $239.95. I don't know what the difference is. It was simple one line commands. I think it just has a more, it's a more advanced. Uh, and then they have the whole system, the TRS-80 color computer system for advanced a- a- applications. So that comes with the extended basic computer, a disk, two disk drive kit, uh, and a computer OS 9 com- color computer disk operating system. That's 869. And actually, they have, uh, do they have computer camp? I didn't go to uh, uh, one at Radio Shack. I went to one at, um, I don't even know, probably some Parks and Rec, but um, this one was held over Christmas break, 26th to the 30th. They had Logo Camp for ages 8 to 11, Basic Camp ages 12 to 15, Basic Camp for adults is $50 per student. I mean, when Ms. people said you basic back then, it meant something different. Then they have phones. They had a personal phone, which was like a junk phone that a lot of people that I know had as a second phone, as seen on TV. That was 1995 on sale. Then they have some press button and rotary phones, which we had a rotary phone for a long All my friends had, and I guess it, when I think about it, it's like it didn't really make a difference. Uh, but a rotary phone... You see, how much was a rotary desktop phone they see in the movies? Forty bucks. Uh, what about one on the wall? Sixty bucks. I think the one in the out of valued the rotary desktop one more. A wall press button one seventy. Desktop press button one seventy. A slim version forty, and a slimmer, uh, depending on how you dial, forty bucks. Then they had like a little bit higher quality one, press button, push button phones. Those were called trim phones, I think. Uh, 
Those are around 70 bucks. I see, man, phones, I thought phones would have been cheaper than that. And then they have like a whole line of fancy phones, an elegant gift with European flair. Give a continent, continental fashion phone. And that was trademarked. So they have the French style, which combines classic design and quality components, continental style ringer and ornamental handset. Uh, like uh, those were, depending on like what you want it to look like, between fifty and seventy dollars. Then they had the French Continental, that one was seventy, and then the International. Oh wait, hold on, International Classique uh, with scroll work uh, that was eighty bucks, and then the Candlestick was sixty bucks. The candlestick one's like the one you see in the movies that looks like a phone on a candlestick, and you pick up the other thing, you talk into one thing, and then you listen with another piece. And then answering machines, we won't spend too much time here, but uh, answering machines were around, and they come with messaging tapes, some with remote controls, 50, 120, um, with single knob, that's a duo. These are duo phones. Uh, 180 for voice activated circuitry stops recording when caller stops speaking. Yes, yeah, so you could spend wow, no wonder we didn't have an answering machine. Answering machines are expensive. Amplifiers to talk hands free, and they have the one like that used to be in the movies. That thing was 30 bucks. Uh, I thought it worked good. And then there was another one that was 50 bucks. Then they had auto dialers. Like if you wanted to auto dial people like push button that remembers their numbers, those were around for 32 numbers, $60 for 16 numbers, uh, $50 and for 93 numbers, 120. And then this was back when we had antennas. Uh, so, and I think this is when cable started, but people still used antennas. So these are add-ons, per per perfect, picture-perfect gifts. Uh, a stabilizer, I could use this in my life right now, a stabilizer and a modulator. I mean, I installed that on me right this moment. Uh, it's only $60, two knobs. Uh, that's when you're, you're eliminating roll and jitter from pre-recorded videotapes. But if it re removes roll and uh, jitter from me, you could also use it to add a second video component. They had a color video, vi video, video processor, which collect, corrects color and balances for washed out video. That was $100. Then they had a stabilizer, uh, enhancer, and modulator. I'd definitely upgrade to that if they could put that in me. Uh, high frequency details, clarity, increases clarity. Uh, contrast, uh, reduces noise, uh, internal noise, uh, process video. And you can actually separate, the fader control separates scenes for easy editing. And that's $100. Then they had different other things. Uh, cable TV block converter with fine tuning. Allows recording of one channel while watching another. Holy cow, twenty nine ninety five. This one offers a solution to video confusion. Video selector with five inputs. Uh, so this was still this was a problem even back then. Then indoor uh, uh, antennas, the Color Supreme Three. That says that they'll see New Year's parades like never before. That's twenty nine ninety five. The color supreme two. So you're taking a step back. Twenty four ninety five. Might as well upgrade for five bucks, right? And then the color eagle two. That's a low cost gift of television for television. Satin brass VHS dipoles uh, with UHF loops. Color coded leads for easy hookup. Nineteen ninety five. Then they had these things, which we had one, uh, like a weather radio, which just plays weather. People still have those. Uh, they're around 40 or 50 bucks. Um, uh, they had one weather radio cube. That was popular, seventeen ninety five. They also had, this one's on sale for Christmas, a 24, it's a wall weather station. 
specially priced for the holidays, accurate indoor and uh, temperature and a hydrometer, hydrogen, whatever, for humidity and a weather radio with crystal controlled reception up to 50 miles in a wood grain finish, 24, that's 17% off. And then they had uh, stylish tabletop radios, uh, the realistic MTA 11, that's $50, uh, six and a half inch speaker. And then a realistic MTA 8 was a uh, radio that thinks it's hi-fi. doesn't say how high a speaker is, but uh, walnut and vinyl. The other one was rosewood vinyl. And then the realistic compact, uh, that's a uh, three-inch speaker, 1695. Uh, then they had other radios. Uh, this is like radio was the main thing back then. Uh, let's see, five band. Well, so you could listen to television, sound on TV one, TV two, AM, FM, VHA, VHF high for 50, 59.95. Also a five band, bigger one does 80 bucks, a four band. So TV channels two to thirteen, yeah, twenty nine ninety five. Man, I would like I would have loved that back then. I had no idea you could listen to TV on the radio. I mean, I've listened to TV on the radio before. I mean, you know what I mean, the band, but uh, uh, four band port- portable one, nine band communication receiver. This is the DX three sixty. It's a hundred dollars. Give someone news source entertainment from around the world. Uh, Six short shortwave bands plus AM FM. So you listen to BBC, Voice of America, Moscow. Uh, features glide path, volume, tone, and shortwave band selector controls, uh, tuning, battery, LED indicator, built-in speaker, headphone, DC, and DC adapter jacks. That's a 360. There's also the Concert Mate eight track uh, player. I don't see an eight track. Oh, you put an eight track cassette in there. Improves stereo separation, and then the DX four hundred. That's three hundred dollars. So you could even listen to CB ham, like everything. Then they had a travel clock radio for thirty dollars. Then a portable pocket radio that was thirteen dollars. Might have to skip some stuff. Then they had like walk, like portable cassette players, uh, portable radios, couple of Christmas uh, cassettes or stereo LPs. Uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol, four ninety nine. Uh, Christmas party with uh, Beach Boy, Mike Love, Dean Torrance, Jan and Dean, Paul Revere and the Raiders, four ninety nine. And a gift of Christmas, uh, Barbara Streisand, Engelbert Humperdinck, Johnny Mathis, Gene Autry, Andy Williams, Mitch Miller, and more, four ninety nine. Micro headphones, nine ninety five. Then they have cassette recorders. So it was packed with special features. Then they have recording stuff, uh, recording tape and microphones. They had uh, 8-track tape. That's not the 8-track you put in your car, though. They had super tape, uh, so low-noise low reels uh, for reel-to-reel, mini cassettes, cassette tapes. Let's see what these mics and stuff. Uh, realistic PZM breakthrough, revolutionary design, eliminates echo, superior clarity, Ideal for use in large rooms and on stages, 20 to 18,000 hertz response, uh, mounted on a metal plate, $40. Uh, There's a binaural amplified listener, dual pattern electric electric for video cameras, uh, $49.95. This is like a boom mic uh, or uh, whatever, you know, long... Mike, uh, deluxe stereo, two elements, uh, that's 40, ultra compact stereo. See, we'd record them. I think you'd want to record a mono, but they had like a binaural mic. Yeah, that was C that I was just talking about. Let's see how much that was. Dual head recorder, that's 1995. 
Okay, so then we get into the dynamic mics. These might be better for um, recording a podcast. Well, a unidir- highball unidirectional. That's for handheld use, forty nine ninety five. An omnidirectional, not as good. That'd be forty. Cardioid po- pattern one. That's dynamic. Uh, twenty nine ninety five. Super cardioid. That's like what that, that's kind of I use. It's like a only k- tries to only get at what you're talking into. Twenty four ninety five and the high ball omnidirectional. So you could start a podcast back then. And they have AFF, AM, FM stereo receivers that run from two seventy nine to six hundred dollars. Uh, wow! Holy cow! Also, a couple record players with cassette. You know, oh, this is like all in one. Those are like five seventy nine to three fifty. Yeah, then a lot more stereo stuff. So I guess this was a place, a lot of selection, too, of different, like, uh, styles. There's one that's uh, $1,249. That's $1,249. Comes with a record player, amplifier, cassette player, tower speakers, uh, 65 watts. I'd say, man, for, 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 for even 400 bucks, I'd want, like, 500 watts. But this is a different time. Uh, and then 170, then they go down from there. So 1250, 750, 609, 299, 379, and 569. And you could also just buy your speakers from them. They have tons of speakers. Uh, and their speakers range from like uh, the realistic minimus. My dad might have had those. Uh, those were 80 bucks. To even like little smaller speakers, and then it, oh, here's one that's cool. This is like what you'd see in the movies: a ten band wide range stereographic equalizer, only hundred nineteen dollars. I don't know; it wasn't an amplifier though, just the equalizer. Then they have these uh, the shelving speakers, space saving three piece stereo systems: the one fifty, two thirty, two ninety. And then, yeah, some of them have tape cassettes. Some of them have dual cassettes. They all have record players. And then one has an 8 track. So 1983 must have been the eight, end of 8 track. Then stuff for your car. So you could get a booming system back in your car, but even then. Amplifier 120. So different things. Uh, you could put some uh, security in your car for. Uh, 80 to uh, 20 dollars. Radar detectors, those were popular. They were expensive too. I mean, I guess uh, people between 80 bucks and, and 170. And then two way radio gifts for safer, more pleasant driving. Uh, Back up a CB that you could put on your roof, that was 80 bucks. Built in. Uh, CB with channel nine priority. We had a car with a, that with a used car. My parents bought a used station wagon that came with a CD or CB built into it. Uh, this one is uh, 80 bucks. Uh, and then FM headset walkie talkies for like the, Oh, these are the ones that kids had on, uh, uh, some of the kids had, or, or Dustin had it, I think on, uh, something like this on, um, stranger things. The pay, a pair is 90 bucks. And then mobile CB, other, other CBs between 140 and $200. Uh, then ba- some sort of testers and LCD multimeters, sensitive 27 range testers, Micronata testers, AC ammeter. So this is like the electronic side, AC converters for holidays abroad. Uh, so yeah, you could use it for, to- oh, there's one that you could use for non-motorized appliances, uh, 50Y converter, 1600Y converter, plug-in adapter set of four, and then values in time for Christmas giving, uh, micronautic quartz travel alarms, a folding alarm, those I always thought were cool, that's 1995, then a LCD travel clock, $12. Miniature travel clock, $10. 
the old projector clock that's still popular it projects on the ceiling 40 to 34 95 they even had one that was a countdown look at this one the exclusive vox clock talking alarm tells the time hourly See, I mean, this is where they're ahead of their time. Perfect gift, for, you know, for someone if if, if they're, uh, you know, they don't look at clocks, you know, their sight's impaired. Uh, it's a 24-hour alarm, announces the time five minutes before sounding. Oh, the alarm does, and then delivers a wake-up melody. Timer counts to down the time at 10 minute intervals, uh, down to 10 minutes and then every minute. So that's, that's what I use one of my smart speakers for. Uh, then led alarms or clock radios with uh, battery backup. Um, those range from $20, uh, 21, 19, 14. Uh, they had pens with time built into them. And calculator, a calculator watch, great question, thirty-one ninety-five. They have LED, LCD timepieces, stick-on cal- calendar clock. I think teachers would have those, uh, $3.88. Uh, cordless clocks, those are, you know, those are traditional clocks. LCD sport stopwatches, $25.00. Oh, you know where I saw those stick-on clocks? My dad had one in the car. Let's see. I'll try to pick some other stuff. A VHS video recorder was $500. A a color portable TV, $300. A portable black and white TV that you could put in your thingamajig, your lighter. They had different ones between $190 and $100. Uh, boom boxes ran from uh, 170 290 250 so those are the cost of boom boxes back then okay this is one i wanted one of the things i wanted to record or cover was uh in the amps mics mics and musical stuff uh the J, number J, the musical power horn. My dad had this, and he used it just, I think, to, like, make, I mean, I, as a kid, I loved this thing. I thought, I, and we weren't allowed to use it except if my dad was holding it. But he would use this everywhere. He said it was, like, to get our attention, but it's, like, perfect for sporting events and rallies. Plays everything from college, fight songs, 94 preset, and five programmable tunes. Up to 80 notes per song. Projects your voice up to 300 feet. Batteries extra is $40. My dad had this exact thing. I don't think he had the shoulder strap, though. But it was a bullhorn. But you could push things and it would go, like, do 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 you know, charge. Uh, and in the hands of a child or a childlike adult like my dad, it was definitely uh, something, uh, you know, wild, man. Oh, they also had stuff for people, you know, 420. They, they, you know, they had 420 back then, even though people don't want to talk about it. So strobe lights were 30 bucks. A psycho light bulb with wild flickering action, 499. Psycho light color show, kaleidoscope of color, 995. I always wanted that. Now I, I kind of, I, now I have one. A little bit different, but same idea. Okay, there are tons of walkie-talkies. Yes, yeah, similar to the ones uh, that we see on Stranger Things. And those are expensive, like between 40 and and $100. They have a, pay, a few pages of calculators, but I wanted to get into these electronic kits before we finish up here and some toys. So I don't know if I, I think it, maybe I had one of these as a kid. But uh, these things were like before STEM. This, I mean, this is like the pre 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 STEM stuff. Uh, these are Santa's solderless kits that make great gifts. I had a crystal radio one. That's what I had uh, for kids and adults that want to learn about electronics. The most popular one was a hundred and sixty in one electronic project kit, as seen on TV. Thirty thirty dollars. A science fair one hundred and sixty in one electronic project kit. Perfect for hobbyists. Uh, let students build radios, transmitters, solar, telemetry, and more. 
They can even experiment with computer circuits or produce electronic effects, all with pre-mounted spring connectors. All projects are solar battery powered. And it came with a 186-page manual, seven-segment LED, a code key, and a meter. Then they had a 100-project one that was $12.95. Then a 30-in-1 that was $14.95. A solar power one that was $14.95. A 50-in-1 electronic project lab kit uh, stimulates young minds. Radio, telegraph, Morse code, and much more work with transistors, diodes, resistors, capacitors, just connect wires to coil springs, nothing to clean up. There was a digital computer kit for curious youngsters to learn programming and binary math by building simple circuits. A hundred projects cover basic arithmetic, math, electronics, geography, games, and more. Lighted display with 10. I think I see, maybe I did have the 50 in one, or somebody did. I know I had the crystal radio one, which is down here. So I definitely had that one. That was like one of the first ways I listened to Dr. Demento, to be honest with you. They have a 10 in one electronic uh, adventure lab, an electronic organ kit, uh, build a tunable organ that plays natural and chromatic musical scales. Uh, with 18 keys, including sharps and flats, and a built in speaker. 10 in one adventure lab, two transistor AM radio kit. The, 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 no, no, I didn't have that one. The two transistor one is 695. I had the crystal radio kit. Plays without power, no batteries, AC transistors, or tubes. Like the very first radios, converts uh, crystal converts RF signal into audio, tunes AM broadcast band with earphone. I remember that earphone. And an instruction manual, four ninety five, best four ninety five anybody spent. And then uh, silicon. I remember loving that thing. And then there was a silicon thing, the solar energy project kit that was uh, nine ninety five. They had a two hundred project lab that makes learning exciting. If only it did. Uh, that one was fifty bucks though. Then they actually had rechargeable batteries. I remember my dad being into those and having a battery charging station. Rechargeable batteries uh, were uh, around five to ten bucks. Battery tester, battery charger. My dad had this, I think, the deluxe battery charger, thirty dollars. And then they had more kits. Oh wait a second, F. Uh, what's F? Uh, Motor generator kit, uh, introduction to electrical energy, nine ninety five. Let's see, they had some electronic games. Uh, what do they have? Uh, a Tandy chess. A Tandy chess was sixty dollars. Computerized backgammon was sixty dollars. Then they had less expensive walkie talkies. We had these two. Um, I think we had the Space Patrol ones. They were a pair for nine ninety five. Great for around the house and stuff. Uh, or there's ones with AM FM radios. Those were fifteen ninety five. Or there was micro thin ones that were twenty bucks. Also, there was this wireless FM microphone that was like people would show people going up into their neighbor's house and like interrupting the radio by singing to them. That was only $7. And then we had this, uh, let's see, exciting, the Tandy 12 Arcade. I think we only used it for Simon, but uh, that was $20. It was 12 games in one. Baseball, it was just like colored buttons. Uh, so I just remember playing it for Simon, but apparently could play other games. Never knew that till now. Uh, then they have some basic arcade games, Zackman, Z-A-C-M-A-N, like a portable arcade set up, $34.95, and then Alien Chase with a fluorescent display, uh, $39.95, a football sports game, $19.95. That was very popular. Three fast-paced games for head-to-head. 
I don't think I had. Maybe we did have this one. 1995. Then learning games. Uh, show and learn, 995. And then Monkey C, 795. They also have a lot of remote control cars. I don't know if we... Oh, there's an out-of-world robot. I think we always wanted this. Maybe one of my brothers had it. It was an inflatable robot. Only went straight and backwards, 1995. Uh, then they had these helmets. We definitely had this one. It was a fire department helmet with a siren on it. Uh, foam padded interior, rugged design, batteries extra, seven ninety five. I don't know if we had anything else on here. Got a couple more pages here. Oh, they had like a kitty phonograph, uh, twenty four ninety five. Um, what else do they have? Another phonograph with a speed with a sing along mic, thirty nine ninety five. Even a picture of a girl singing along. Portable portable cassette recorder and player. What is that thing? Realistic CT sixty four. A colorful recorder with strawberry micro shaped microphone. Color coded controls. High tone built in speaker jacks. Uh, and five tapes. Only thirty five bucks. And then a couple other ones. I think you could record off the road radio. Easy for youngsters to use. Some portable radios uh, with headphones. Portable novelty radios. One is an M-O-U-S-E, an owl, a puppy, a couple dogs, and a cat. Uh, those are around $15. Furry friends that kids love. A high-quality AM radio. Then they had novelty radios and a spaceship. That was a radio? I, I know we had a space shuttle, but I don't think it was. There's like a Heinz ketchup one, a Smurf one, and a Wilson football one, and a Globe. Those are all between 12 and $15. They had a bike radio, bike horn, deluxe bike radio with built-in horn. I remember people having that. Uh, Archer Road Patrol, $14.95. And this was another thing I thirsted for. I guess if I had, I could have just used my own money to buy it. Flavor radios, just because they had this pop in colors, lemon, orange, blueberry, and strawberry. But they really colored these things. In a, I don't know. They really did a good job. Uh, and those were uh, five ninety nine dollars uh, on sale. And then we get to the back page uh, of the sale thing right on time. Uh, they had a Cosmic 3000 game. Never seen, I don't even know if I've seen that at one of my friend's houses. $30, uh, like a portable video game. A headset radio. This one looks pretty not high quality. That was $17.95. Then a foot portable football game. That was $14.95. They say, we bought the manufacturer's entire inventory so you could buy below 1982 dealer cost of $28.75. Then a game called Pocket Repeat, which was the same as Simon. That was $7.95. And then one of the toys I got probably this Christmas was the Armatron. And I remember asking, for, begging for it because I thought it would change my life. It was pretty fun. I guess it was supposed to be a game. I thought I could use it to manipulate time and space. But it was similar to what you'd see as an industrial robotic arm nowadays. Again, very similar now to even what's in the past. Generate hours and hours of fun for kids of any age. Uh, uh, introducing them to robotics. This highly manipulatable, manipulable robot arm executes experiments. Add, add sugar to cereal. I should have wrote. I never even thought to try that. I thought I could use it to, like, you know, squeeze my siblings' fingers or, you know, bring me snacks. Uh, two joystick remote control motions uh, to pick up. Uh, energy level countdown meter, meter for timing skills. Uh, globe modules, canisters, and cones for practicing delicate things. I didn't really use those. I think I used, mostly used it for different... Uh, like set pieces with my G.I. Joes and Transformers and other to dolls, that, you know, action figures, chillaxing and dolls I played with. 
but it's just a robotic arm with two remote controls. One of the coolest gifts I ever got. Thank you. I appreciate it because it wasn't cheap, $31. I mean, maybe they got it the next year, hopefully, on a little bit better price, but I appreciate it, and I appreciate you taking this journey. Uh, and let me know what you think. We'll take another catalog journey again soon. Good night, everybody. All right. Uh, I want to thank everybody who reviewed the show over on Apple Podcasts recently. Pretty Pretty Lynn from Canada says, I never heard an entire episode, nor do I have any idea what's going on. Uh, thank you. Uh, JV says, wasn't uh, happy the, with the ads. We, we haven't really changed anything about the ads really in the past, like three or four years, other than because of the Sleepy Sport Zone, we've gotten ads to the point where uh, they work. So it's like, uh, yeah, I kind of am in a position where I want to keep the podcast free. Uh, Nay says, uh, wholesome and useful. I heard about it on a podcast, opened it. I said, I don't know what to think of this. Shut it back off. Uh, now, roughly a year later, I decided to give it another chance. This is a very s common story, actually. Uh, I love the inclusive nature of the podcast. Uh, even though I decided there's no way I'm going to fall asleep to it, I'd let it keep me company. Uh, then day two, I started enjoying, uh, thanks everybody. And, uh, the dang mystery bard song still didn't fall asleep to it. Gr started to grow on me. Day three fell asleep immediately. And it's been a week since day three and I've been asleep uh, ever since. Uh, so, so thank you. Thanks. Uh, unhappy penguin ear is happy about the podcast, uh, which is good. Uh, I listen every night. At first I listened, I thought it was odd that the host didn't have the most soothing voice, voice yet I passed out in 20 minutes. Uh, then again, the next day, there's something about the sameness of the podcast uh, that brings me comfort. Thank you. Uh, Bishop Jess says, thank you. Uh, grateful for the podcast and the creaky dulcet tones. Well worth a try to anyone struggling to sleep. Uh, Mandy says, appreciate your existence. Uh, love the doctor who, I think we got all these ones, uh, from last week. I uh, also want to, uh, thank everybody that uh, signed up uh, for a referral program recently, uh, in the last week, uh, Jessica, Angel, Christiana, Melissa, Kelly, Mary, Sarah. Gabriella and uh, Charlotte, uh, thank you. Thanks so much. Really, the and you can sign up if you're listening. I'll talk about it in a second too. But sleepingthepodcast.com slash refer. It's a huge way to uh, support the show. I really appreciate everybody doing it. Uh, thanks so much, and thanks and good night. Hey, everybody. This is Scoots. As I tuck in here, I just wanted to let you know about two things. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. That's what I was talking about earlier. Free way to just get rewarded for spreading the word about the show. Uh, you could get an ad-free feed, podcast feed. So if you say, well, I can't afford to be a patron, but I want ad-free episodes, you could you can earn that through sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. You could also win a pair of sleep phones. You could get some bonus episodes. So there's a lot you could do. And that's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Or if you're already a patron and you say, I don't want, I, I, like, I, I don't want to, like, listen to the ads or I don't want to listen to the thank yous. I just want the intro and the episode. Make sure to set up your uh, patron feed in a podcast app. Just go from your phone or your device. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. That's uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. And get it set up. Uh, you'll log into Patreon. You'll click allow. And then you can connect uh, your bonus count content or your membership uh, to a great podcast app. There's a lot of free podcast apps there listed, uh, and then you'll be good to go. Or if you want to become a patron, you can still use that link and then you can sign up and then you can use that link again to get all your bonus content set up. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. Thanks, everybody.